What's up, everybody? I'm Leah B. Jackson. I'm here with Brian Albert. Hey, everyone. <laughs> He's IGN's Dota 2 aficionado and free-to-play reviewer. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the movie? I thought it was amazing. Uh, I give it a 9.2. Uh, you can read all about it on IGN. Actually, the documentary is embedded in that review as well, so you can just watch it straight from there. So, one thing that I thought about this kind of competitive gaming documentary was that my friends, they, they don't know a lot about Dota, and they kind of don't want to watch it because they don't understand the game. Do you think that people who don't understand Dota can get a lot out of the documentary? Yeah, absolutely, because it's not... This isn't a documentary about Dota. It's about people who play Dota. And they have their own struggles. Like, you know, one of them, you know, their parents like, hey, you want to be this professional gamer? You want to make money doing this? And when it fails, he gets kicked out of his house. Or like someone loses their father to cancer. Uh, it's about these people struggling to be the best at something while also dealing with these real world struggles. And I think that's something that anyone can relate to. Right, so it has a lot of really personal life stories that are relatable to anyone, not just people who like Dota. And I think that that's kind of a good way to grab people and sort of make them care about what's going on in addition to the really awesome tournament that's happening. Right. So what are other ways that the documentary kind of does that? You know, in Dota there's all this crazy terminology and there's a reason to kind of be afraid of starting to play Dota <laughs> because it's hard and there's a lot to know, right? But what they do is they're, they're just like, hey, this is a game about five players versus five players. You're trying to destroy the other player's base. And that's about as far as they get, as far as the complexity goes. Yes. And you know, every once in a while, if they'll say like, oh, during a draft, you pick your players, they'll kind of make it very clear what's going on. They'll put up little images and they'll say like, here are the rules. So they have yeah. these kind of casters or commentators or people who are really knowledgeable about mm -hmm. the game to break it down to a very, you know, simple level that anyone can understand so that it's easy to pick up. Right. It'll be like, you know, here's this player, you know, Dendi, one of the stars of, the sh of this uh, film. You know, it'll be about his family and then, oh, it cuts a break to the match. And so there's like, it's not just like full matches, full like, you know, stats and numbers. Exactly. It's like, it's broken up into little bits that are easy to understand. And speaking of things that are easy to understand, um, the way that Valve kind of takes these epic, epic moments that are really memorable for fans of Dota who've been watching it for a really long time. They kind of created these awesome cinematics that sort of tell these moments in a new way that's really easy to understand because they look so awesome. So like Dota's not a bad looking game at all, right? But uh, the, if you watch like on the replays in the, in the game, you know, it's kind of zoomed out, it's kind of far away. So Valve zoomed way in and the characters look great and they're animated well. And it's so much clearer, like if you die in Dota, your character just sort of disappears. But in the cinematics, you know, it's dramatic. The character's like rolling on the ground. Right. It's just like, it's very easy to see like, this was a good thing someone did, or like a, yes. this was sort of important. Uh, you don't have to like kind of hide back behind like mm -hmm. the HUD of what Dota looks like. Right. Yeah. And another thing that I thought that was very smart of Valve to kind of grab people who might not be interested in Dota that much is they use Jeremy Lin. Right. A very famous NBA basketball player at the front and center of the documentary. He's there within the first five minutes or so. Right. I was, I was at the premiere actually in San Francisco at the Castro Theater, and when he showed up on screen, there was just crazy applause. <laughs> it's kind of neat to see, you know, this professional NBA player. You know, he has millions of Twitter followers, and he's just like in here talking about Dota. Like, right. it's a great relatable way to say, like, you know, it's not just like these little nerds in a corner playing this <laughs> right. game. You know, like there people like this game, and it's not impenetrable. So I guess what it boils all down to is that people who don't really understand Dota can get a lot out of free to play just because it puts these stories on a really relatable personal level that anyone can kind of understand. Mm -hmm. So for more on free to play, definitely make sure to read Brian's review and for more on Dota 2, keep it locked to IGN.